the Inspire 3 is an aerial cinematic juggernaut. Sure, it has a huge price of entry and that's even before you add the lenses. But it's not just the drone's sleek design, RTK compatibility and incredible X9 8K Air camera payload that make it so expensive. You're also paying for the powerful software that are featured in the new Pilot 2 app on the RC Plus that is exclusive to the Inspire 3. So this video is going to be a deep dive into what cinematic features it has and how this new Cinefocus Pilot 2 app justifies the price of admission. So let's dive in. The DJI RC Plus. Before we dive into the software, we really need to touch on the controller itself as it really is an integral part of how operating this as a cinema drone differs from its industrial counterpart for the M30, M300 and M350 series. Although it may appear large at first, there has been a lot of thought put into the button positioning, which gives you up to 13 fully customizable buttons and three dials right within your fingertips, ensuring that once you take your time to set up to your specific settings, you never have to take your hands off the controller. Even if you do, like if you want to give someone a high five for that epic shot you just got, the chest strap and waist support that comes in this kit makes it easy to go hands off if changing lenses or hot swapping batteries. The additional accuracy that you will have by not needing to fully support the weight of this over long durations of use is also a huge plus. They really have workshopped this controller's functionality to make it as user friendly as possible. At the very top we have the micro SD, USB type A, HDMI out and USB-C inputs. For those wanting an SDI out solution for sending uncompressed digital video signals like the DJI Ascendance for the Inspire 2, we can confirm that you can output this via the USB Type A port into a converter for SDI broadcast conversion if you don't want to use the HDMI out. Playback is also possible now via the HDMI out to an additional monitor or screen, whereas in the Inspire 2 any playback would be solely on the controller's screen and any attached external monitor would annoyingly turn its feed off. This is a simple but huge quality of life improvement when on large productions. The internal battery on the RC Plus delivers up to three hours of use, but it also has the ability for utilizing the WB37s used in the Crystal Sky and DRTK2 base stations to double that use to six hours. It's a nice addition that at least this battery remains the same for those with plenty of spare if upgrading from the Inspire 2 workflow. Now to the home screen and main camera view. When booting up the controller, if you're familiar with the RC Plus from the Enterprise drones, it might seem familiar at first with the options for flight route planning in the same location. This is an option where you can manually plan a route by setting up waypoints or recording a live mission. However, this can also be done within the app itself. This is also where you can import a pre-planned flight route using KMZ files. One of the main differences from the Enterprise Pilot 2 app you'll notice is that we don't have the Flight 2 Hub integration here. Instead you have live broadcast options and this is where the corresponding live URL and connection status will be displayed if connected to a live service stream. Now once you enter the camera view, that's where all the cinematic features are fully unlocked. Keep in mind this is a single op and we will show you what a dual operator setup looks like a little later. Obviously there is a lot to dive into here and we've got a full deep dive going through all the elements in this layout as well as diving into the full systems menu settings but for this video we just want to highlight those key cinematic elements that separate this Pilot 2 app from the previous Go 4 used for the Inspire 2 and Fly apps when it comes to cinematic settings. So first thing we should talk about at the top here is where all the recording and capture details are located at a glance, starting with the EI settings that are back from the Inspire 2. This is similar to your ISO settings if you're unfamiliar with these cinematic features. But very top level, there's no essential difference between EI and ISO as they're both used to measure the sensitivity of the sensor to light. The X9 8K Air has a dual native exposure index of 800 and 4000 when shooting in 30 frames and under, and 320 and 1600 when above 30 frames. The next feature to highlight is your shutter speed, or now shutter angle, and this is one of the new cinema features not found in the Inspire 2. If you head over to your capture settings here, you'll notice a little cogwheel in the shutter section. By selecting this cogwheel, you can now change from shutter speed to shutter angle. Now, does this make a huge difference? 
Well, apart from shutter angle being the industry standard in cinema cameras, once you do set your preferred angle, regardless of the frame rate you've selected, the shutter will always be locked to whatever your preferred shutter angle is. This is a first for DJI drones. More often than not, this will be 180 degrees, the standard for capturing that cinematic motion blur. Although for those old school cinematographers out there, I'm happy to report you can also select 172.8 from those mechanical shutter days. Moving over to the color settings, this gives you options for what your recorded footage will look like by selecting your LUT profile. Now, of course, LUT stands for lookup table and your options here are D-Log, Rec 709, hybrid log gamma or look, which is a custom LUT that you can upload via the controller. Then you have the monitors LUT options, which is basically the color output applied to your controller screen for monitoring what your final footage may look like. Now this isn't a new feature, however, it's great to see it's still here in the cinematic capture settings. Now before moving on to the recording settings, it's important to say that I won't be able to cover all the specifics of the recording resolutions with the compatible codecs, frame rates and aspect ratios, but DJI have put together a spreadsheet that we have linked in the description that should be able to answer all of those queries. It's very detailed, so we recommend you check that out. So for now, I'll just be going over the top level details that are important to know when using this menu system. At the top, you can select either full frame to utilize the entire sensor or the cropped Super 35 to punch in a little more if needed. Now your maximum output resolution will be limited to 4.1K in the Super 35 mode without the ProRes RAW license, but with it, this increases to 5.5K. The recording codecs that come standard with the Inspire 3 right out of the box are H.264 and ProRes 422HQ. Notably, there is no H.265 or ProRes 444 included at the time of recording this. The max resolution in 8.1K in ProRes 422 is 30 frames per second, but this can go up to 120 frames per second in 4.1K after SNQ is selected. You can, however, unlock up to 75 frames per second in 8.1K by purchasing a license for ProRes RAW and Cine DNG. The next thing we should talk about, and one that I briefly mentioned, is called SNQ, which stands for Slow and Quick, another new feature for the Inspire series. By selecting this, you unlock the ability to set your project's frame rate, so essentially the playback speed that you want. You can then also select the sensor frame rate, so how many frames are captured per second, and this is how you can access that buttery smooth slow motion straight out of the camera with no post-production needed. You can also see this selection displayed here under the recording settings. Then we have the toggle between photo and video. Now you'll notice here that there is no additional smart capture features like your prosumer Mavic series. So if you're looking to capture photos and you want a bracket, you will need to manually expose for these. But we can report that even though it's not this drone's key function, it does take great images. Lastly, you can get a clean view of the camera view with all your settings around the edges by either swiping two fingers down or having this set to one of your custom buttons. This is especially great when you don't want any unnecessary distraction and you just want to focus on the composition, especially as the camera operator. When selecting Spotlight Pro, the app will begin to pick up subjects in the area, and once selected by tapping on the screen, you can then confirm the tracking by pressing C2 on the back of the controller. Waypoint Pro is a powerful tool that utilizes the RTK compatibility to allow for both accurate repeatable missions or using as a 3D dolly to allow for the drone to fly along a route you predetermine. We feel like this feature will become extremely useful, especially on large productions where specific actions are planned out with subjects moving in and out of frame. And when used in a dual operation scenario, once the mission is set, all the pilot needs to do is push forward or back to move the drone along the route while the camera operator has full control of the camera's composition. We also have another video in this section, Tracing Drift Cars, that you can check out if you want to know more. I think this is actually a good place to discuss the differences and similarities in screens from single to dual operations. So when dual operating, if you are the pilot, the upgraded FPV camera is now fantastic to navigate with. Your UI can be cleaned up with the capture settings removed to allow only the essential inputs for flying with confidence. The FPV window is now where the main camera image was located, which can still be toggled to full view if needed. 
And the location of the camera's position on the minimap here also has an indicator showing where the camera is pointing as well as when the gimbal is reaching its limit. This gives the pilot information for them to decide to reposition the front of the airframe to adjust for this limit, or if you have the quick turn feature on, when it reaches the gimbal's limit, it will automatically perform a 360 maneuver to reset the position. That was something that did exist in the Inspire 2, so it's great to see it brought over here again. As the pilot, you still have the ability to access the Waypoint Pro functionalities from here, and any flight route mission created will be placed on the minimap as well as have a progress bar that can be moved anywhere around the screen. These positions will also be placed on the HUD as points in space, so you have a better idea of where the next route point is in 3D space. As the second operator of controller B, you will have access to all the capture settings as well as Spotlight Pro for subject tracking. Aside from that, you can also select from free or follow modes of the camera, which can also give back control of the gimbal to the pilot, or they can also select that themselves on their controller, which will give them back full access to all the capture settings. Now we can dig into the customizable options on the RC Plus to make your flying and filming experience as efficient as possible. There's a good chance you've been flying for a while and you have a lot of muscle memory programmed in when using the Inspire 2 or another heavy lift cinema drone. And this is where you can find the best way to effectively transition these over to the new system. Now the first option here is allocating the A and B controller channels when dual operating. Controller stick mode is the same as all DJI drones where you change the inputs to suit your flight controls. This also includes camera controls in dual operation that can be fully customized to suit. There are a total of 13 buttons and three dials that can be changed to suit your preference and each option is laid out under specific subjects such as exposure, focus, monitoring, gimbal, flight control and app. Lastly, you can disable the side button icons with this toggle if you don't want them appearing on screen. Below that is where you can link additional controllers for dual operation. Also, I think this is a good place to include that this drone has the compatibility with the DJI Hybrite remote monitor that can be used as a secondary remote controller. This remote monitor can pair directly with the Inspire 3 to receive live feeds and can even control gimbal and focus with the other pro accessories like the Ronin 4D hand grips, three channel follow focus and master wheels. It also has HDMI and SDI ports on the remote controller to output live feeds to other monitoring devices. And it means you don't need to utilize the USB-A output with a converter from the RC Plus in order to transmit an uncompressed digital signal. Of course, this is all additional costs and for most projects may be overkill, but this type of end-to-end -end functionality is what makes this drone so attractive to high-end productions. Image transmission settings unlock another cinematic advantage in this new system with 4K image transmission capabilities when the recording format is lower than 30 frames. Video output type allow you to select either a duplicate view or clean camera view only to an external monitor. Great for directors on set wanting to see what's captured live. And video output resolution gives you different resolutions for downstreaming to an external monitor. Gimbal settings give you three profiles to tweak to suit your style or specific scenario that may require slow, medium, or fast reactions. RTK is the biggest hardware-related addition to the Inspire series outside the camera upgrade, and this has a huge impact on the drone's overall flight capabilities. This makes flights more stable and unlocks more accurate, repeatable missions with Waypoint Pro, including 3D Dolly, that is a game changer when it comes to repeatable flight setups. Often on film or commercial sets, you'll be doing the same takes over and over again, especially when the request from a director is to hit a position in the air or fly a path while tracking to match a subject or action in a scene. You will need either the DRTK2 base station or purchase a subscription for a custom RTK network. However, those are mostly located in built up areas. So we recommend if it's in your budget to go for the base station to give you more flexibility as well as reliability regardless of your set's location. It's super easy to connect and it can find the RTK signal quickly and without issues in our experience. The advanced camera settings is where we dive into where most of the cinematic settings live. Starting with monitoring. This gives you greater flexibility to determine what you need to assist in your video capture. This includes functions such as histogram, waveform, frame guides, and focus peaking, just to name a few. 
These can be set to any of the customized buttons on the RC Plus, as previously mentioned in the remote controller settings. Storage relates to the file name format, where you can allocate a camera number, reel count, and clip number. This is also where you can format the SSD. Lastly, the other option gives you access to sync the newly added time code capabilities. A huge inclusion to round out this drone's place on high production commercial, TV or movie sets, allowing the drone's footage to easily be aligned on a timeline with any other cameras in the production for a seamless post-production workflow. This is also shown on the main camera capture settings here. There you have it guys, hope you've enjoyed this deep dive into the Pilot 2 app for the Inspire 3. There is plenty more to discover on this drone, so if there is anything specific you want to know more about, please leave a comment below and we'll make sure to cover it in the next video about this incredible drone. Thanks for watching, happy flying.